In New York, what's good about it is the city is so big, there are always streets you never walked. Even after 16 years of living here, there are so many more streets I never walked before. As a freelancer, if you look for something to do, you always have something to do. Then you will get stuck working 24-7. You can't just have output, output, output. You have to feed yourself with something else, you know, like reading, watching movies, you know, like just taking a walk. You should be able to relax a bit so you can keep getting things out of you to create those works. I draw everything on paper with ink, and then I scan in using this big scanner, and then bring it to Photoshop. Everything that has color is in Photoshop. Everything you see in the final piece is in the original drawing. The coloring stage is a little bit difficult because you feel like, oh, I can add this, I can add that and then come back like after a few hours or like after a day and I open it up and like, ooh, why did I do this? People ask me, what do you think is the difference between fine art and illustration? Because the border is kind of blur. In illustration, there's always the client who is hiring you to do the job. If you make a masterpiece, if the client is not happy as an illustration, it's not a success because freelance art is always 50% art and 50% business. In my case, usually clients call me because I don't know what she will come up with, but I think she will come up with something interesting. So every single one is different and every single one I treat as something completely new. DC Comics, I worked with them for seven years, I think I did 70 covers for one series start to finish. I'm working with the writer Michael Cunningham for his new book, which is coming out in November. And it's a book of illustrated short stories based on fairy tales. And of course the mural was Sagmeister and Walsh. I would have never done something like that if they hadn't called me it was the biggest piece of artwork from what I have done before. I've been drawing ever since I can remember. People say, define your work, explain to me what your work is like. It's like looking at the mirror. Defining it is like asking me to define what I look like. When Americans look at my work, most of them say, oh, your work looks very Japanese. And Japanese people look at my work and they say, Oh, your work looks like a Japanese person who's like extremely Americanized. My parents didn't want me to go to art school. It's like very typical, you know, like do something more practical. And so I went to regular university and majored in advertising and marketing. Not the art part of advertising and marketing, it was a business school. I was scared at the beginning when I went back to art school. I did two years undergraduate, so I was 34. So I felt like, God, I'm so old, like what am I doing here? My goal was to, of course, pursue what I wanted to do, but also move back to where I feel like I'm more comfortable living in, which was New York. People think the difference between professional illustrators and non-professional are that our brains were somehow wired differently. You know, the light bulb like ping and like we have an idea in our head, but it doesn't work that way. We are used to doing more research. At the end of the day, it's your work. And if you think what other people are telling you is not right for you, then you have to stick to what you believe in. Whatever comes my way, if it's something I haven't done in the process, you become a little wiser and a little bit more open-minded. That will feed your artwork. Just accumulating knowledge is kind of beautiful, no?